All right, just wanted to make a quick video, uh, which was actually requested by one of my uh, Facebook friends, uh, Jason Chavez, so just wanted to shout out to you. He just wanted kind of a quick overview on some basic Audi and Volkswagen terminology. So just kind of threw this together super fast, uh, not meant to be comprehensive in any way uh, or definitive, just uh, kind of general concepts to uh, make it a little bit simpler to understand for folks who are less familiar with Volkswagen and Audi and some of the specific terminology uh, with their vehicles. So uh, without further ado, uh, we're going to cover just a few basics, just a super quick and dirty. Uh, so we're going to start basic settings. So a lot of people ask what these are, when you perform them, what the purpose is. Um, so if we're looking at it here, essentially what we're dealing with is uh, tests that you can run on the vehicle via the scan tool. So um, these are things that Volkswagen builds into some specific control units where you can essentially, uh, via the control unit itself, actuate a physical test of a given system. So Lambda Control is a good example. Uh, basically, it uh, runs the vehicle through a battery of uh, different parameters while the vehicle is running that will allow it to determine uh, whether or not the Lambda Control is functioning correctly. In other words, uh, oxygen sensor feedback loop and whatnot uh, to the ECM. So, uh, you know, it depends on the vehicle. Each vehicle is different as far as which vehicles have which tests and such. Uh, we'll show you a little list of some of all the possible ones that exist out there, uh, which I actually pulled out of the new Top Don Phoenix Smart, which has a really nice function where you can kind of look at all the different possible ones that could be present on a vehicle. Uh, it's not broken down by vehicle itself, but kind of a grand list, if you will. Um, the other thing that basic settings are used for is learning a new electrical components, uh, base values or characteristics to the ECU that it's connected to. So as you can see here, we're talking about throttle body is a really good one. Um, everybody's familiar with this usually once they've worked on Volkswagen a few times. Uh, essentially what you're doing is communicating to the control unit what the stopping points are of the voltage values that feed back to the ECU. So if we're talking about the sensors, the potentiometers that are inside the, the throttle actuator uh, assembly, then basically the ECU is learning, okay, what's the stopping point when the throttle's all the way open and all the way closed? Uh, and it needs to know that so that it can properly control it. Uh, it also looks at the characteristic curve, uh, the response of the motor as you're opening and closing the throttle. So uh, again, that's one of the reasons we do basic settings is to teach in those learned values uh, for the base performance of a new given electrical component. So they have that for oxygen sensor heaters. And again, we'll go through a list here and you can kind of see for yourself. So here's just uh, page one of the list. Uh, you can see there's a lot of different stuff. So aging check there, channel 34, that's an example of a test. Um, ignition knock sensor test, you can do that. Uh, vacuum pump testing, EGR test. So a lot of these are just tests that you can basically run via the control unit. Again, it's going to vary between vehicles as far as whether or not it has that functionality. But if you write a lot of these down, you may be able to use these on given vehicles. Now, sometimes they don't give you the, uh, pre, the, the preconditions for doing the test. Uh, they won't always write those out in the test itself. So it might be tough to know what conditions you need to satisfy. Um, sometimes you can find those in the scan tool. Uh, the Top Don Phoenix uh, Smart does have this in some of the different tests. They will tell you what the criteria are before you can run a given test, which is awesome. So I'll go to page two here and you can see another extensive list. Uh, throttle kick down adaptation. That's another one that's real common that you do have to do for basic settings. Um, but you can see there's quite a list here as far as uh, different ones. Uh, that might need to be performed as far as learning a new value or learning a new uh, component in, but also, again, performing output tests. I like to look at the uh, the basic setting tests as kind of like the, uh, if we go back a couple of slides there, kind of like the Kian engine off uh, or Kian engine running Ford PCM self-test, uh, except that Volkswagen has this in a number of different modules. So there are often different tests that can be run via the basic settings like this. So just kind of some cool stuff that Volkswagen builds in. So now we'll go to adaptations. Um, I like to look at adaptations more as like a long-term learned value for a given system. So something maybe more like, uh, well, good example would be fuel trim. Over a long period of time, the ECM is going to learn fuel trim and how the vehicle 
behaves under different loads and um, you know wide open acceleration and idling and whatnot it's going to form basically a composite that it then knows exactly how to control the way the vehicle runs um, you want to clear those values out when the vehicle suffers like a significant failure of some sort so it's got a block catalyst or it's got a stuck wide open injector or maybe it has an ignition coil failure that's when you want to clear out those kind of adapt uh, adaptations or adaptive values because it will essentially learn a poor calibration if the vehicle is driven in a poor state of being for a long period of time and that's respective to any system we're talking about so um, whatever vehicle has an or whatever component or module has an adaptive value if there's a major malfunction with that given system it makes sense to reset the adaptive values so again that would be something like a transmission if it develops a major shifting issue then it, once it's been repaired you want to reset those adaptive values and take it through the proper drive cycle in order to get the ECM to relearn or the ECU to relearn that value uh, so it can control everything correctly again so again that's the best way to look at it long-term learned values and some of them are even like you know you wouldn't think of this as a, a adaptation but um, some of the Bluetooth connection on the simpler dumber vehicles that don't have the center dash control where you can physically manipulate the Bluetooth on the low line vehicles you actually have to reset the adaptation uh, values so that it will connect new Bluetooth devices once it reaches a certain threshold it's essentially full and can't learn anymore and so you have to reset the adaptive values so that it will then learn additional new Bluetooth devices you also have to relearn the uh, or reconnect the original ones that have been erased from the learned values but again just another long-term adaptive value that gets learned to a given control unit uh, that you do need to reset depending on the the circumstances so that's basically what you're using for adaptations again it's going to vary widely between vehicles as far as which ones are available which ones are required you're going to want to explore that you know go through the menu on your scan tool when you have a given vehicle that you're performing a repair and take a look and see what's available and then consider you know hey am I making a major repair to this system does it make sense to reset that so here's a list of just some basic ones from an ECM standpoint now some of these can also be selectively altered so in some cases you can change an adaptive value because okay I want the vehicle to idle higher or idle lower or whatever it might be but you can make some adjustments to these adaptations as well in certain circumstances uh, instrument clusters BCMs um, a lot of them have adaptation channels that you can selectively edit or change the characteristics of how the module will physically behave so it's important to keep that in mind um, you know always keep that in mind before you go pressing anything make sure you know what kind of state it's in beforehand and if it's a field where you're entering in a number make sure you write down whatever number beforehand uh, read out that uh, value if you can write it down so that if you screw something up you can go back and undo it um, but again this is just an overview of the ECM again it's going to vary by vehicle you never can be sure which vehicles are going to have what obviously ash mass calibration that's going to be something on a diesel not on a gasoline vehicle but um, again just a few things to keep in mind there um, coding coding is one a lot of people ask about uh, coding is essentially we I would call it soft coding so soft coding is you're typing in a sequence of numbers that essentially give a control unit an identity um, basically what this does is tell the module which vehicle it's installed into so Volkswagen might use the same BCM across multiple vehicles or uh, different trim packages and different even sometimes you know they might use the same engine control unit in uh, an engine that is used with multiple transmission options so you need to code that control unit to tell it what transmission it's physically working with am I working with a manual transmission am I working with an automatic am I working with a DSG dual dual uh, dual clutch gearbox or am I working with a conventional automatic transmission so those are things you want to keep in mind um, coding is something that you want to write down you can retrieve it from the module before you were to do a replacement uh, you want to write it down you want to record it take a picture of it with your your camera phone whatever it might be but make sure you have all of that recording for any module that you're going to be disconnecting or replacing uh, before you replace it because unless you have Otis which is the factory software to code it and program it and whatnot you may not be able to retrieve this coding later uh, it's also crucial 
if you're doing a used module or whatnot, um, it's very important that you do have that coding. So soft coding is, again, just a sequence of numbers that can be retrieved from the control unit uh, via scan tool and should be recorded. Uh, I always recommend if you do have a Rostec, you can do a global scan of the whole system of the vehicle, and it will actually record the coding in that global scan for every single control unit, which is great because if for any reason a module loses coding, and that's the only problem with the module, you can go right back in and look at your log file and pull that right up and type it back in, and generally speaking, you'll be okay. Um, some scan tools also have the ability to do this coding via the internet. So the new top down units uh, like the Phoenix Smart uh, have this capability. I think most of the launch and the ThinkCar newest models also have this, uh, or Think Tool. Uh, Autel definitely has this on a lot of their scan tools now. Uh, so just keep that in mind for future reference. Uh, you may be able to get bailed out even if you do make a mistake and happen to lose the coding. Uh, so that's just an example of where you're going to find the coding module option. On uh, This would be similar on launch. This is on a top down, but that's where you're going to find the menu. Once you're inside the control unit, you're going to see all the different options and coding modules where you're going to find that. Now we're going to go to programming. Programming is kind of twofold. Uh, so there's software version management, which is basically a specific string of letters and numbers that get typed in to essentially pull a version of software for a control unit. Uh, this gets performed and essentially software gets downloaded and there's some matching that happens essentially through the database that occurs that uh, allows the uh, control unit to get programmed. So the software version management pulls all this data once the code gets typed in. Uh, that code is usually dealer specific. Uh, they will oftentimes not give these out. Sometimes you can get them from TSBs. Uh, sometimes if you have Otis, you may be able to retrieve them without having to talk to someone. Uh, other times you may have to call the parts department to get this information. So software version management, again, it's that's something that you're going to have to do on a new control unit. If you do replace a control unit, this is something that will be performed. Uh, once the SVM code gets typed in, which is, again, the sequence of letters and numbers, then the uh, scan tool will talk to the database, typically with Otis. You know, that's the experience that I've had. Uh, it'll talk to the database and what they call parametrization uh, will occur. And that's basically now the database has identified that this control unit is in this specific vehicle and requires all of these specific physical functionalities to the unit to be activated. So let's say we're again, BCMs are a great example on this. So in this particular vehicle, maybe it's a coupe. So it only has two doors that have windows that go up and down. Maybe it has four doors and windows go up and down, but it needs to know that. And so when the parametrization comes through, that's going to physically tell the module, hey, you have four, four windows to operate. This is where you do it from. It, it'll actually physically tell the module which pins it's going to be activating, you know, as far as uh, output wise for voltage and whatnot. So it's very important that that all gets carried out uh, as well. So again, that's all part of the SVM process. And then if we look at the uh, immobilizer function, you do have to remember that that has to be performed on a lot of vehicles as well uh, for specific related components. Now they've been expanding this to larger and larger numbers of components. Um, I just got some examples here, you know, the ECM, keys, the immobilizer control unit if it has a separate one, um, access start authorization, steering column lock. But again, they continue to expand this list. So this is by no means comprehensive. It's just some basic examples. Um, the one other thing you want to keep in mind if you are doing programming or if you're just replacing a control unit period is that in general, uh, if it's a brand new control unit, component protection is something that must be removed from the ECU in order for the, uh, after the programming has taken place, you need to remove component protection. Otherwise the module will not function correctly. So it has to actually have the component protection removed because otherwise it's in a anti-theft mode, which actually deactivates a lot of the functions of the module. So uh, I talked to people on the phone when I was at Identifix where they would install a new control unit. They had Otis, they had done everything except that the control unit was still not functioning fully. And it seemed like it was almost like in a delivery mode, if you will, where it only had limited function. And that's usually because component protection has not been deactivated from that control unit. So you got to make sure that that gets done in addition to the programming function uh, that you need to perform. So that started uh, the 
component protection started in the 2000s era. Uh, Audi started it earlier than Volkswagen did and also applied it to more modules. Uh, now you see it across Volkswagen Audi. Both of them have it. And most of the modules I've run across at this point do have that function, uh, do have component protection. So it's very common now. Uh, so you definitely need to keep that in mind if you are working on these vehicles and doing any kind of coding or programming or anything else. Um, just remember the component protection is a factor. So uh, that's just quick and dirty basics. Uh, do my best to be concise and accurate here. If I made any mistakes or whatnot, feel free to you know shoot me a text or reach out and I'll get it corrected. Uh, but as a general statement, this was just meant to be kind of a basic layout of the land of uh, the various stuff that you're going to do when you're doing a replacements of various modules or uh, when you're performing functions like basic settings or uh, adaptations or whatnot. So again, just wanted to uh, provide this as some basic information that might clear up some questions uh, just around the basics. We are going to do a European 101 class, which I'm going to go through some basic tips and tricks on VW Audi, uh, BMW, and Mercedes potentially. Not sure if I'm going to include Mercedes, but um, just some things for general shops that don't work on European cars every single day that maybe will make your life easier when you are trying to work on them if you get stuck working on them or if you decide to expand and start working on them voluntarily. So anyway, uh, if you like the video, please, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, share it with anyone you think might find it beneficial. And uh, of course, I greatly appreciate you watching and uh, subscribe to the channel if you do find any of the stuff that I'm producing here useful to you. So again... Thanks for watching.